We've lived in an RV for two years now and have had multiple solar setups. Our current setup is these Rich Solar 250 watt panels. We have six of them on our roof for a total of 1500 watts. And we thought that was gonna solve all of our power needs. After a four month trip of traveling all around the Northeast of the US, honestly, we weren't that impressed with the performance of these. So today we wanna to compare these to another type of rigid panel. This one from Renogy called the Shadow Flux 200 watt panel. We're gonna be comparing these two panels head to head and find out if this is the one that we should have installed in the first place. Before we get into all of our tests, let's talk about how we got to this point today. So as we've been living in this RV, we've gone through a couple of different solar setups. So the first one that we tried out was doing a thousand watts of flexible solar. We thought that was gonna be a home run because they're marketed as being lightweight, durable, and with, at the time, an older RV roof, we didn't want a lot of weight on our roof. So we thought that this was gonna be a really good solution. However, after us testing them on the road, the durability for us, frankly, sucked. They did not last long, they got hot spots, so we knew that we did not want to stick with that setup. So after realizing that flexible wasn't going to be a fit for us, we then decided to explore rigid solar panel options. After looking at our options, we found that the Rich Solar 250 panel was actually a really good fit for our RV roof. Reason being is that it seemed to be, I would say, the most energy dense for its size. So pretty much it was the smallest panel that you could get within a reasonable size uh, with a very high watt output. These measure about 30 inches by 60 inches. They weigh 27 pounds each and they have an output rating of 250 watts. So last year we had a thousand watts on our roof. This year going with the rigid panel setup, we wanted to increase that. So we actually had 1500 watts of solar on our roof. So that was six panels. We had three in series, two parallel setup. So all of that sounded great in theory. However, unfortunately, the power output we were not at all impressed with. We thought if we put 1500 watts up there, we should probably consistently be seeing between on a good sunny day, maybe 1200, 1400 watts. However, I think the highest we ever saw it get to was about maybe 1200 watts. I would say consistently the peak that we would get on a sunny day was more like 800 to 900 watts. To be clear, I did go up when we noticed that the output wasn't as high as we were expecting and I disconnected all the panels just to ensure that we didn't have like one going bad and dropping the whole system, but they all outputted very consistent volts and amps so we didn't have any outliers in our groups and all of our rich solar panels performed equally underwhelmingly. <laughs> So I originally we were hoping to increase our capacity by 50%, but we're realistically producing 50% of the capacity that we put up there in the first place. So that kind of led to us conserving more energy on the road than we originally anticipated that we were going to have to do. We'll get into how the Rich Solars have held up otherwise on their power output, but I am honestly so excited for this test against the Renogy Shadow Flux panels because, I mean, we are always all about finding whatever's going to be the best for our setup, and we always love to share our learnings with you guys. So moving over from our 250 watt panel, this Renogy Shadow Flux is a 200 watt panel. So it's roughly 10 inches shorter than what we have currently and a few pounds lighter. So it doesn't quite have the same rated output per size or weight of the panel, which is why we went with this first panel in the first place. But we're hoping that the real world output of this is gonna be way better. So as the name suggests, the biggest feature of this panel is its shade performance. So they advertise that you can shade up to 25% of this panel and still produce 65% of the overall rated output. On a normal panel, if you shade 25% of it, that output is typically gonna to drop to zero. Our rich solar panels are actually split into two, so it performs a little bit better than an average panel, but we're very curious to see how these are gonna be head to head, both in shading tests, but also in optimal conditions. One of our requirements for solar that we wanna install for ourselves and what we would recommend for you guys 
is having a good warranty on panels because there's so many companies out there. A lot of them actually reach out to us on this YouTube channel, but we want to work with established companies that are going to be around for a while. So if you have an issue with it, you can get it replaced. So both of these companies are very established. They come with a 25 year warranty and they guarantee that the panels are going to have at least 80% output by that 25 year period. And I think this is also a good time to mention that this is not at all a sponsored video. We are genuinely curious in the results of this test and we don't share products with you guys that we don't use ourselves. So if we're not happy with the output of this, we're still gonna share it and they are not telling us what to say or anything. We are just really curious to share these results with you guys. All right, so let's get into the fun stuff of actually doing testing. So for our testing, we are going to be using an EcoFlow Delta II for understanding our power outputs. We have a range of different tests that we're gonna do from full sun to partial shade to filtered light. And at the very end of this video, of course, we're gonna be posting which of these panels performed better. So don't get too excited. Don't don't skip forward yet. Keep Keep watching so you see the good stuff. And I will say this is the second time we've done testing like this. Last time we did the testing of our rich solar panels versus our old flexible panels and the results didn't turn out how we expected. So I'm very curious how this is going to turn out today. Okay, so we've got these panels set up at optimal angle to the sun. We do have some wispies in the clouds. So this is going to be our partial cloudiness test, I suppose. We'll do it a few times, so we'll try to average out what these are getting. But setting them up at the optimal angle, we're using this can of beans to make sure that we don't have any shadow cast on the panel. And that ensures that we are directly pointed towards the sun. Right now we have the shadow flux. 200 plugged in and we're getting 147 I saw was the highest. Okay, let's try the other one. Switching over to the rich solar panel, we are at 128 watts right now. It's fluctuating a little bit. The highest I saw was 128. Okay, second test on the Renogy, same conditions. Now we're getting 154 was the highest that I saw. And we'll switch over one more time. And rich solar is bringing in 130. So Roughly 20 watts less for a panel that's rated for 50 watts more. But this is just one test. We got to see how it does for the rest. For this light overcast that's going over the sun right now, Renogy wins this test. Okay, so those were our results for the partial shading test, but we totally acknowledge that it's not ideal testing conditions. So let's skip ahead to a time when the sun is fully out and we can get a more fair comparison against the two. Okay, so it's the next day and the sun is completely out. There's no clouds in the sky, but it just came up. It's about 10 a.m., just enough to get full sun on these panels. So there's a very realistic use case if they were to be flat mounted to a roof and the sun was just to start coming out for the day. Let's see what these panels are getting. So first we have the Rich Solar plugged in, the 250 panel. And it is producing. 98 watts, pretty consistent at 98. Now let me unplug and plug in the Renogy panel. Let's see, Renogy is producing 106, yep, stabilizing at 106 watts. So just a couple of watts better, but for being a smaller panel rated for quite a bit fewer watts overall, again, I'm a little surprised and impressed with this Renogy panel. Now let me wait some time again for the sun to get a little bit more overhead so I can get a peak performance test and make sure these panels are pointed directly at the sun in full sun. Okay, it is now just about peak sun in the day. So sun is overhead. It is November, so it's definitely not directly up in the sky. I've got my panels tilted as much as I can to have them directly pointed at the sun. There's really no shade being cast by this can. So let's see what the power output is. Okay, first I have the Rich Solar 250 plugged in. Full sun test. And we're getting 155, 156, 156 watts. And now I have the Shadow Flux 200 plugged in. And that is getting 170, right on 170. This is in direct sun. 
So neither one is producing 100% of its rated capacity. The Renogy is definitely much closer, but one factor to that is definitely gonna be the heat because really any test we do throughout the year in Key West, Florida is gonna be a heat test, but I have a temperature gun to see what these panels are running at right now. So the Rich Solar is at 130, let's say 132 to 138, depending on where you point on the panel. And the Renogy is a little bit cooler at the high 120s. So I took these numbers and actually plugged them into ChatGPT to let me know how much the performance might drop by having the temperature increase like this because they have been out here baking in the sun. And it said that performance could drop anywhere from 10 to 16% in these types of temperatures. If you're in a cooler environment or you're just coming out of clouds, you might have higher performance like this, but this is definitely realistic conditions of temperatures that we might be in while we're traveling and using solar on our RV. So about 170 watts was the max that we had on the Renogy. Okay, and now I wanna do some shading tests here. So I've got the panel faced directly at the sun. As a benchmark, right now we're bringing in 160 watts and I'm gonna progressively cover up more and more of the panel with this towel and see how long until our output reaches zero. So now we've got one row of cells covered up and we're bringing in 129 watts. Now we've got about a quarter of the panel shaded and we're bringing in 94 watts. And at about half the panel shaded, we're bringing in 47 watts. So still, still bringing in some power. And when I go a little bit over half of the panel shaded, we are completely dropped to zero. So let's see how that compares to the Rich Solar panel and see how quickly the drop off is. Okay, and now we've got the Rich Solar set up. It is just about perfectly situated. It is bringing in 153, 154 watts as a benchmark with no shading. Covering up the top row of cells, we're bringing in 76 watts. Now covering up just about a quarter of the panel, and we are bringing in 71 watts. And all the way up to the halfway point, this maintains pretty consistent. It is still pulling in 70 watts. And that's because like I mentioned, this panel is split into two. So the bottom should still be producing full output and the top's obviously completely dead. And just like I predicted, covering up just a little bit over the halfway point on this panel, it has now moved us to zero watts of output, killing the entire production. So what those results mean to me is that these two panels actually both have pretty good shade tolerance, but they just do it in different ways. So whereas Rich Solar does their technology by splitting the panel in half and essentially hedging your bets that you're gonna have one side shaded or not, Renogy has their shade tolerance built in at the cell level, so it performs progressively across the panel. I would assume being more reliable over time in realistic, real world scenarios. And one last test that I wanna do is to simulate if you had debris. So I have a few leaves here that I'm gonna sprinkle over the panels and see how dirt or debris will affect output if you have these panels flat mounted. Ideally, you'd be cleaning all this off of your panels, but we're looking at realistic scenarios right now. So as a benchmark, we're bringing in 110 watts. So I have a handful of leaves that I am gonna sprinkle over the panel, across the whole thing, simulate a little bit of coverage and see what that is bringing in. So we're still getting 108 watts. That amount of debris did not really affect the panel. Okay, now I got about the same amount, maybe a little bit less since it's a smaller panel, but the benchmark is that we're bringing in 119 watts. If I throw some like that, we're bringing in 114, so not a huge difference. I would say similar performance across these two with some debris on the panels. Okay, so that is gonna do it for all this outdoor real world testing, but before I declare a winner, let me put everything into my computer so I can get a clear comparison of one panel versus the other, and then we can tally up and see which one won in the end, and hopefully what we can recommend to you guys. So overall, I would say after looking at all the numbers, 
This little thing kicked butt. I mean, I was honestly kind of expecting to come into this and thinking that a 200 watt panel, an R250 watt panel would be pretty even because we heard from watching other videos and from firsthand evidence of other people with these panels on the road that they perform seriously well. But what I was not expecting to find out is that this produced better in almost every test than our 250 watt panel. So not only is it smaller, but it also outperformed. The only area where it didn't produce more watts than our current 250 watt panel was in a 50% shading test, but that was playing really into the strengths of our rich solar panel because it is cut into two individual panels on each side. But other than that, this thing killed it all across the board. And when you factor in that it's smaller, the percent difference between the two is even greater. When we were installing a new system on our roof, we really wanted to install as many watts as we could fit. And that's why we looked at panels that had the highest rated power based on the dimensions of the panel. That way we could fit as many as we could on the roof. But there's things that are more important than rated capacity. You've got to do testing. If you can test them yourself, that's great. But also that's why we create videos like this. And a lot of times you're probably going to be better off with fewer watts overall if those watts perform well for you than if you just go for the highest number overall than you can. If you're interested in this panel, we will have a link in the description where you can pick this up. They're actually doing a pretty good Black Friday sale on their website if you're watching around that time. If it's later, then we'll make sure to have a relevant link for you guys long term. But thanks for sticking around for this video. I'm super happy with finding this panel and we'll see you guys next week.